Hey y'all, in 4 h and H here. I want to show you what I think is one of the coolest things about the ham clock that uh, N4CME was so kind to send me. I've got it right now doing some DX chasing. There are four uh, D expeditions out there, and I've, I've managed to get a contact, at least one contact with each one of them, and I've gotten the four W8X that's the Timor Lest expedition. I've gotten them uh, looking up there now three times, and even did it with a hundred watts uh, on sideband on the twelve meter band. So it's morning time now. Uh, I got them last night, but the uh, map that you're looking at right now, I want to show you how to interpret that if you're not familiar with this. It's pretty cool. So you see, I'm gonna. I'm gonna zoom in here for a second and get you way up in there. See that, all that green is good. <laughs> Yellow is iffy, red is not so good. Uh, black is, you're probably not gonna make a contact there. But I wanna mention to you that I have made contacts even when I'm seeing black. They were iffy, if it probably, if it hadn't have been for the receiver and this radio, um, I wouldn't have been able to do it. I was using the 5,000, but, um, Actually, on some of them, I was using the DX10, the FTDX10. Uh, but over here on the right, you'll see the DX cluster. And uh, let's say if I'm, I'm wondering, what are my chances at getting? Right now, we're looking. By the way, this is the propagation for the 17 meter band. Let me, I mean, let me tell you why I know that. Over here on this side, you see I've tapped 17, and see that it's going to get good here in a few minutes. Um, you know, with that green there. Now I'm basing that on 100 watt CW. If you change it over to sideband, you, you you just tap on the CW there and you can change it to sideband. If you do, you, you won't see as much green and yellow. In, in other words, it's let, kind of letting you know that you got a better chance getting these DX contacts with CW than you do sideband. But again, it can happen. Like you see the solar flux number up there? It was 200, right around 200 yesterday. I forget the exact number, um, which was great. The maximum is 300, and the higher that number is, the higher the frequencies uh, are that you're likely to have good propagation. In other words, we call it the MUF, maximum usable frequency. So that's nice when that number's higher. Uh, around 200 was ideal. And last night, even though the sunspots Last night were, what was it, 26, something abysmal. Um, but the solar flux was around 200, and I was able to get um, a 9,892-mile contact with 100 watts on, on sideband. But again, these, these are, you know, configurable down here. You can tap one. You can change it from 1, 10, 100, or 1,000 watts. Obviously, 1,000 watts will give you a little more green. Um you got takeoff angle, which I leave at the default of three. Um, SP short stands for short path, um, so it's going to um, indicate the short path. When you, you'll see that in here in a second. And then sunspot number is 13 today. Um, so let's say that I'm, I see a, a DX spot over here, and I want to go. What are my chances of getting this station? So let's say eight, the 4W8X right there on 17 meter band. All right, so the red is showing the short path, so it's going to go go that go west for me. Um, looks like it. Uh, let me show you down here on the bottom left. It's telling me the distance, nine thousand eight hundred and forty miles. Yeah, it, on on uh, Ham Radio Deluxe, it estimates nine thousand eight hundred ninety-two, and on QRZ, it estimates nine thousand eight hundred seventy-five. But it tells me that I would want to aim my beam at three hundred and five degrees. Um, gives me their t local time, date, latitude, longitude. All right, but back up here to VOA cap. And um, so that station was was is on the 17 meter band. There's another one, TX7L. Uh, but so there's there's two. Four uh, the four W8X is also on there. They're the longer distance contact. Uh, almost twice the distance of TX7L. All 
All right, so you saw the plot telling me what was my short path, if I had a beam, you know. I mean, you guys who watch my channel know that I use wire dipoles. Um, a doublet, an off-center fed dipole, a ZS6BKW. I do have one vertical, Kishcraft R5. Had, I've had that thing now for, wow, probably getting close to 30 years. Never had a problem with it. Uh, it's pretty good on 10, 12, and 15 meters, but being a vertical, it brings in a little bit more of the atmospheric noise, you know, that's just out there from lightning storms all over the globe. That uh, The noise from that collects and it's more uh, noticeable with vertically polarized antennas. All right, but now what I want to do is I want to find out well, what are my chances, and I can you can see right now, see the green the green dot over here is in a a red region, and see up here seventeen has a red block, so that's just telling me yeah uh, you don't really have a chance at him right now, but let's try the TX seven L. I'll tap on them. Now it's drawing a plot. I would want to aim my beam at, it's showing me 4,704 miles, aim my beam 242. That's down in the lower left. You can't see it right now, but see the green dot? Also no chance. It doesn't mean I wouldn't try. And I have, like last night when I got the four W8X on 12 meters, um, 24.945, and they were listening up uh, five, um, it was showing that I didn't have propagation. Well, indeed, I could barely hear them. I did film it. There's a there's a video about it um, that will be coming out at some point. Because um, I got them first with the amplifier on running somewhere around 700, 800 watts. And then I got them again at 100 watts just to see if I could. So don't give up just because it shows black. Go tr Go listen and see if you can hear them. And uh, maybe if you've got enough power, you, you might be able to get them. Or, like last night, I got them with 100 watts after I did it with the amplifier. Uh, you guys know me. Much more than five 600 watts, the amplifier's not making a huge difference. All right, so look at this, 17 meters. It will get good in a bit because you see the yellow and then it goes to green. Well, look at the green dot and see how close it is it's going to move through this red region yellow region then get to green and then i'll have a shot at them you know and i'll tell you this if that thing tells you green you you pretty much got a shot at it the green means you have more than a 66 percent chance yellow means you have less than a 66 percent chance but more than a 33 percent chance and then red means you have less than a 33 percent chance black means yeah probably not going to happen but again last night using my doublet antenna and this ftdx 5000 i was able to work 4w8x on on 24.945 now again the solar flux was around 200 so that gave a very you know a high maximum usable frequency uh for for hf communications which was good all right, so let me um, let me show you how how I did this. So I, I I got the plot and then I just tapped on seventeen. So let's let's say that I want to see what are my chances at getting. Um, well, here's a weird one. X W D X W four D X. I look at the plot. Um, says I would want to aim my beam at three fifty. And. Uh, Work him short path, 8,779 miles. And uh, that is on 20 meter, on the 20 meter band. So right now it's showing me the weather. Here we are back. Now I'm gonna tap on 20. I hope I hit 20. And it's gonna redraw the map. Downloading. You just have to be patient at this point. But this is cool. It'll save you some hassle of just throwing your call sign out to a DX station to just to find out uh, if you can get through. I, like I said, I'm not saying don't try, but this gives you an idea of whether you're going to waste your time or not. 
Um, and there are those times where if your antenna is good, the doublet at 24 megahertz, my doublet is 250 feet of wire fed in the middle with a ladder line. And um, that's a lot of wire in the air for that frequency. It's uh, multiple wavelengths. And so it has a lot of gain. Now, the higher in frequency I go, because that doublet's cut for 160 meters. The higher in frequency I go, the more lobes of gain I'm going to get, but also they're going to be they're going to be stronger, but they're going to be more narrow. So then I'm going to have deep nulls where I don't have a signal. Um, you know, I don't have a good path. Yeah, this is I'm looking iffy. It is it is plotting the 20 meter map as you can see up there, uh, right there. But uh, that region of the world, yeah, it's, it's not going to happen. So you can look at it and you can say, oh, it's 20 meters. I should have a shot. Well, now here's another one, H44WA. I've worked them. Let me see. What's the plot for them? All right, I need to aim a beam. It's 8,035 miles. Let me pan down and let you see that. I would need to aim my beam 277 degrees. It's showing me their weather right now in place of VOA cap. That'll time out, and then uh, I'll be able to see uh, what the VOA cap thinks. Yeah, see? But look where it is. It's over here. There's the green dot. Oh, let me get, get down here where you can see it. See the green dot? There they are, and they're in a green region. They're in the dark, but they're in a green region. So... Uh, and they're, all, they're on 20 meters, so I don't need to do anything up here because it's, I already have a plot for 20 meters, see it? And all I did was tap their call sign in the DX cluster, and it put the green dot where they are, and there, it happens to be green, but in the dark. That's why it's kind of a faded looking over here, see? There's the gray line. And so it's dark where they are. But I've got a shot at them on 14200. So just a little more insight into the ham clock, interpreting it, um, in case you're interested in this. Um, now this, this comes from Veridium, V-E-R-I-T-I-U-M, and uh, one of the S9 Plus, I also call them VIP Plus, a Patreon team member sent this to me as a gift for Christmas, and he sent it early. Thank you so much, Vince, N4CME. And uh, so Vince is the reason I'm able to shoot these videos for you. Now this software is called Ham Clock. This device is called HF Clock, I think it's on the back. It's, I did an introductory video about it. If you go to Innovato, I-N-O-V-A-T-O, I don't know if it's .com, but Google it. Uh, as a matter of fact, you want to probably type in Innovato and then Quadra, Q-U-A-D-R-A. You can get the software alone for a lot less than what this device cost, but then you're gonna to have to have a computer. Well, that's what the Quadra is, and then you'll just supply the monitor and whatever else, you know, like a mouse, keyboard, I guess. This one I'm controlling with a touch screen, but with the, with the Quadra system, you can have an external monitor, uh, and you can, of course, make it bigger. This is nine inches. Okay, well, I hope you found the video helpful and informative. Thank you for watching videos on my channel. Please hang around for 32 more seconds. I want to recognize five of the members of that Patreon team, what I call long haulers. They're, they are members who have supported the channel for a year or two or more. Without them, my channel would not exist. You would not have ever seen this video uh, or most of the others. In fact, the entire FTDX 10 series would have never happened had it not been for the long hauler. So, I want to recognize five of them at the end of this video. Again, thanks for watching videos on my channel, 73 from N4H&H. &H.